A producer gave you some advice that was pretty lasting? Yeah, so um, I, I was a personal trainer at the time, and I was still, you know, I was doing short films and, and, and all of that stuff. I think I was making my first feature, which was a back alley, you know, group of friends putting their credit cards, you know, into the pot and just making a, making a film. Uh, I think I was doing that at the time. And I was, uh, he was somebody who was very integral developing the Fast and the Furious franchise as well as the, the show um, 24. And uh, he just happened to be one of my clients and, and we, uh, you know, became friends uh, from the whole thing. And he was, gave me some great advice. Uh, um, and one of the things he, he told me was, number one, he said, don't be a a-hole. That was one of the biggest rules. So this business is so small that if you're a jerk, it's gonna come back around. Um, so that was one of the first things he told me. <laughs> he's like, and he was very colorful in the way he explained it, but um, he's like, that PA that you're working with on set one week, a year later, they might be producing the show that you're working on. You know, it's that, that's the way this business works. So if you're a jerk to that extra, they might be the star of some show in, in a year or two. So you just never, you know, you should never, uh, treat people, you know, poorly. And especially, I mean, that's just in life, but especially in this business because it, it is really so small. You end up going to have to work with the same people again, most likely. And uh, the other thing he told me was if I really wanted to pursue being a creator, a storyteller, a filmmaker, to never be a, you know, no job is too small, never be afraid of, of being the coffee runner or being the in charge of extras or whatever it is, and also to diversify. So the business was changing so much at that time. It was when uh, digital was just coming out. It was kind of taking over everything. Um, and uh, uh, even DVDs and that whole Blu-ray, everything that was, the industry was just shifting and shifting and shifting. So he told me to diversify or die. Those were his exact words. If you wanna make it and survive in this business, diversify or die. And I took that to heart. And that's why if you look up my credits, you'll see I've done so many different jobs is because I basically adopted the attitude of uh, just not turning down a job. So if I was offered a job and I had the ability to do it and I had the, the time to do it, um, that I would do it. And, and again, it goes back to that viewing it as uh, uh, an, an education. It's like, oh, I'm going to learn about this. And he also told me that same thing of... Look, if you learn what it is to be a, a grip, and if you learn what what it takes to be the the you know uh, art department, if you learn those things, it's going to make you a better director because you'll understand what it takes to do those jobs, and you'll understand what they're going through to do those jobs. In the same respect of, it's a very important for a director to be understand acting because you'll then be able to uh, understand the process or understand that there is a process with actors and be able to sympathize with them or help enable them tell their truth in that role. Same thing with uh, editing as a director. I think it's so important to understand editing because you understand what you're shooting. Um, there are directors who are not editors, um, but I think you need to have a certain understanding of that in order to be effective. It helps you with time management on set. It helps you when you know you have your scene. You know, you don't need to shoot four more angles that you'll never use and be on the cutting room floor because you know you have the scene. It's there. You've got all the pieces you need. Um, so those two things I already knew were important to be a director, but I didn't think about the other stuff. The, the What is the gaffer doing? What is the grips doing? What are the makeup and hair? And, you know, kind of learning all those different departments, it's only going to help you become a better director, is what he told me. And and uh, so I took that to heart, and I took every job I could take. I did everything I could do and, and just felt like it was a, an education for me um, and, and would just help me be better at the job that I was trying to uh, pursue. Do you ever feel guilty turning down work? Um, you mean now? Yeah, my, my sense is that you're, you're eager and you love what you do, that if, if an opportunity comes up, you almost feel bad if you can't take it because maybe if you're totally. committed to something else. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh -huh. And uh, what's interesting uh, and, and, and topical right now is that I had to back out of directing a film 
uh, overseas because of the pandemic. And actually, I was over there when it started getting really bad. I was over there prepping, and oh, it's going to be a fantastic film. I am uh, now kind of jealous that I <laughs> didn't get to direct it. But um, when this whole thing first came up, I it started getting bad and, and uh, was definitely really worried about getting home because it became uh, one of those things of, uh, you know, at the time they're like, you know what, we, you could just stay a couple extra weeks and wait it out. And then when it's safe to travel again, you know, it was one of those. And But what what ended up happening was the international flights started canceling, like just stopping all international flights. And I went, oof, I think I'm gonna have to go home because I can't get stuck here. Uh, I've got a family and all that. So I did, I ended up getting home uh, and uh, on the last weekend where those international flights were flying, I got home wow. and uh, did the quarantine, did all that stuff, got tested and I was fine. But uh, the, it, the whole thing got pushed because of it. And, but then it came down to this thing where when they wanted to shoot, it still was just not a safe time to be, to go and travel. And, and the worry of being able to get home was so, uh, you know, just too big of a worry. It was just too much uh, to, to be able to commit and go there and do it. And I felt horrible turning that down because I had committed to doing this project with, with these wonderful filmmakers and, uh, um, uh, some of which I had really dreamed about working with for a long time uh, because they were a big part of Asian cinema, like with, with uh, you know, Jet Li and Jackie Chan and all of that. And so I had to turn it down. I felt so, so bad. Um, but obviously it's not under my control. It was out of my control, um, the whole situation. So, but uh, yeah, I think I do uh, feel that way because um, I just enjoy... I enjoy creating and, and helping tell stories in, in whatever the capacity, whether it's, you know, even if it's stunt coordinating, that's still you're part of telling that story. You're part of telling the, the story of the action of how it's happening and unfolding. And I just love, I love that process. So, um, uh, and I think there's also that element of feeling like you might be able to help somebody, uh, and then not being able to, you know, having to say, no, I can't help you. Because <laughs> I get those those uh, calls, uh, you know, fairly often. It's it's somebody, usually when they're calling me because they need your piece of expertise or something uh, that, you know, you might be able to be that puzzle piece for them. And then when you're not available, uh, obviously that's that sucks. But I always try and recommend somebody. I'm like, well, call this person. Or I'm definitely that that way as well. I really love to to, if I can't do it, get somebody else the work, you know what I mean? Um, and so I do that.